she landed into the uh, um, Shalom Ansky club. So where they were singing Yiddish and it was the, the, the workers, the Buddhists. <laughs> and uh, she learned, uh, she said, so she had already a lot of Yiddish and a lot of Yiddish songs, but she learned more, more of it and she learned a lot about the background. And she was a beautiful lady, so she performed in uh, Yiddish and dancing. Um, um, uh, Professor David Schneer found uh, little little pieces of programs uh, from 1934 and 1935, so long before she met my daddy. And then she became uh, uh, famous in a dancer in a revue, the Baumeister revue, the biggest revue theater. Uh, she was one of the girls, even though she was pretty small, she was at the end of the, <laughs> of the line. Um, but she never stopped to sing Yiddish songs. And then my daddy, uh, he came from Germany in 1936, and they lived all together in uh, Den Haag, uh, in a Gemeenschapshuis, as they called it, a house where um, different young intellectuals left and shared all the, the, the expenses and um, he fell in love and he was a German musicologist, uh, yeah that's the right word, musicologist and he was a pianist but uh, and he had a PhD in musicology but he never heard, heard anything about uh, Yiddish music and Yiddish songs. So he fell in love with this young, beautiful woman, and he fell in love with the music. And in 1938, uh, they started their own programs with uh, Yiddish uh, songs and dances, as it was usual in this time. David Schneer calls it a Yiddish variety. I don't know if, or Yiddish revue, I don't know if it is the right terminology, but it was a combination of dances and, uh, and, and music.